welcome back and just in case you're just joining us this is signature morning here on signature television and i am godwin sunday this morning we'll be talking about relationship and also parental negligence to be specific in nigeria because of the high level of moral decadence as perceived to be in the nigerian right now it's right now it's on the high rise where you see children who go about the street and they look at you as an adult eyeball to eyeball without any form of them um, showing respect or decorum so if, even if you're standing in a car or in a public transport occasion normally the children ought to even stand up for you to sit as a parent but then all of those narratives are changing right now and joining me in this conversation talk about decadence in nigerian and also parental negligence in general in nigerian is a victoria yusufu uh, we popularly call her bikola and um, she's a relationship expert and also an author you're welcome to signature morning thank you very much all right so let's begin the conversation uh, you've heard the narrative first we've seen the culture of respect mm. is becoming a thing of the past parents are quick to point it at the school that the school are not doing enough to take care of um, the children the mm. school are quick to point at the parents so this blame game has continued over time but you are in this field where do we channel our, our, our ch what do we channel this and grievances to everything starts in the house everything starts in the home and if parents don't sit up to their responsibility of course it's easy it's a human tendency to blame other people easily just like my fingers now if you look at it if i point at somebody four of it is pointing back at me so a lot of people don't know that they are supposed to impact certain things to their children before they even send them to school back then many years ago you see parents saying you have to sit down well you have to eat your food you have to clean after yourself you have to greet elders you have to respect people even among your siblings they'll say this is the first child everybody has to respect him or her and that is how most of us grew up even our parents they had it tougher than us but unfortunately now a lot of people forget those things and they feel that oh my own parents were too harsh so i don't need to be so harsh on my children not knowing that the harshness with love is what is expected of parents it's a res responsibility it's an assignment it's a calling you can't just be a parent just because oh you got pregnant or you got married and you feel that the only thing you have to do is education and then you just let your children slide or you just have house help doing everything you have to know your role as a parent and be sure that you take it day by day of course parents are not perfect because they have their own background also but at least the little they have learned out of life they should be able to instill these values into their children early enough before going to school and then the school authorities also should know that oh they are different children in this school with different backgrounds so we should be able to teach them morals they have subjects like um uh, for morals values um, habits but apart from the book parents in schools because these teachers some of them are already parents they should be able to instill um, correction morals values to the children they are teaching it's not just to come write lesson notes and then just reel out things for children and say oh you are supposed to say good morning ma and then write your notes do your homework and all there are other things you will notice in the life of, ch of a child and be able to say oh junior you did this wrong you're supposed to sit or you're supposed to say sorry to the next child you're supposed to do your homework your work you're coming late to school what happened you're supposed to relate to these children but you know what a lot of people in our system in education system these days are after the paycheck they don't they are not called into that teaching line so they don't care if your child comes dressed anyhow if the socks is dirty if the um, sandals are, are torn they don't care about that they're just after their salary and so they just close and oh, it's not my child not knowing that our parents succeeded because a child belongs to just the parents and the society 
rather not just the parents but also the society so if you see a lady dressed wrongly even if you don't know her from adam you say hey you're not dressing well if you see a child maybe in a bus now that the child like what you said at the beginning that some children these days won't stand up for elders no, all it, that it, children it's thing now, so. yes all that uncles and aunties and mommies and grandfathers will say hey stand up i remember when i was pregnant with my first two daughters if i'm in public transport without saying anything other people around will speak to these children or teenagers and say don't you see that she's pregnant stand up i was on um empty um queue for atm um this yeah atm to withdraw money some time ago and i was there for a long time with several other people and there was this young guy ahead of me a woman said please allow this woman to go and withdraw first he said no after all of us are under the sun this and he said no i won't even allow you you rather take my own step my own place let this woman go so these are the things we need to keep reminding people we need to speak out if you see something say something so we don't just relax and say oh it's not my child it's not my it's my neighbor's child it's not actually my child it's the ch uh, child in the church it's not my child it's somebody's child it's not my child so when you see the child going in the wrong way you should be able to correct them don't just wait for parents don't just wait for teachers alone all right so let's talk about this culture of um i know in law there's a maxim in law that says um tempora mutente etnos mutenos in elise i'll mm. interpret it means time change and we change with time most people are saying right now that the culture of um, respect the culture of value mm. has out over outlived its stay and it's not supposed to be it's not supposed to be a conversation right now at all and that's why we are seeing all of this um, moral decadence in the society but let's bring it back again to the parents do parents have a large portion of blame to take from all of this um, decadence from our moral values of course who else would you blame is it the children that their brain is totally flat open white like our table here it's the parent that has the responsibility and the assignment the calling to start instilling those values into their children but, but, early but knowing fully whether well most parents right now have very hectic job and the economy is not smiling <laughs> and they need to meet up certain responsibility yes so I, I think this is one of the reasons why they employ nannies to be able to instill those um, disciplines to the children I, I might be wrong but you can help out those nannies are not qualified those nannies are not blood related those nannies might even like your child might be there for you for a while but they keep going because they are not they it's not their calling it's not their duty it's our duty as parents to teach our children the proper things i have nannies from when i had children but i make sure that the prayers are said by me and my husband the um, values clean after yourself stand up i don't even let my children insult nannies no matter who you are no matter how old that child is you just have to respect even if somebody just comes to the house you have to greet somebody is passing by you have to greet so these things let's not blame nannies or teachers in the school it starts from the house your relationship with your husband is very very important as a woman if you respect your husband your children are watching if you insult or you lie or you make all manner of noise and you nag and you cause issues in the society you argue with the next neighbor your children are watching these things cannot be easily corrected when you are the one that they are saying because physically your children see you as a mentor as a role model as a hero as a god they practically worship their parents that's why you hear um, little girls say i want to marry my daddy or I want to marry somebody like my daddy when they are a bit older they know that oh daddy is already taken the next person is I want somebody like my daddy if he's a good man and the same thing with the boys the boys will say I want to marry mommy and when the mommy now say ah no I'm already somebody's wife I'm your mother now this and that and the child now say okay I want to marry a lady that is like you that will take care of me the way you take care of daddy so everything starts from the house God didn't start school first God didn't start a company first. In the beginning, God created a man and a woman. 
So if your child is disrespectful, they must have learned it from the house, not from the school, not from the society. The child is not born just dropping from heaven. Even Jesus Christ came through a woman, by a woman, to be trained in a home. So we shouldn't just say, oh, uh, maybe they learned the insults and the verbal um, or stealing habits from outside. They must have seen those traits in the father or the mother. So now, husbands, love your wife respect her speak well about her in front of your children then your children will also learn to respect their mother do you know that some husbands will beat up their wives in front of their children insult her drag her on the floor what are you passing on to your sons what are you passing on to your daughters so it starts from the house we have to take up this responsibility and say no enough is enough i won't let my child misbehave like other children and be pointing figures it's my duty so it's now we have to correct it if not it the ripple effect is alarming everywhere well, we're already experiencing some of the ripple effect the rate at which we have um teenagers hmm. going into social vices is becoming very alarming across board mm. we've seen police parading a lot of teenagers that are going into what we call uh, internet fraud mm -hmm. what we call them yahoo yahoo, yahoo here yahoo. Yeah. even in secondary schools right now secondary school students are not exempted mm -hmm. i mean even from information available to us it's a see most uh, children have started becoming uh, joining cults from uh, them from js uh, one and what have you from primary school oh, primary school okay so so let's look at all of this right now to a very large extent don't you think that some of these children are properly trained and their parents catered for the responsibility but the fact that the internet has become a, a, a challenge where everything is being dumped these are, can be a factor that is affecting the children as against parental negligence in general parental negligence has a crazy alarming way of affecting children if a child if a mother is pregnant and she doesn't speak to her child through pregnancy maybe she's not aware she's supposed to start praying for the child saying things or having a name for the child ahead and getting things in place god gives us nine months to prepare for before the child comes we're supposed to set things in order you hear people say hey i didn't know you didn't know but now you are aware you are pregnant you start planning what do you want this child to do where do you want this child to go to which type of school what type of course do you you don't have to lay down everything at least have an idea you can write down those goals down for you so that you can have something to look back on then you keep going step by step but do you know what parents do they change schools regularly they don't care what their children do you see t children as little as five years ten years still outside around 9 p.m 10 p.m 5 p.m 8 p.m roaming around the, the streets because parents are busy the people that even have money they misuse opportunity of having helps and drivers and they let their children insult people anyhow and they go go away with it but people that don't have so much instead of saying oh back then you hear things like story um under the moonlight or something the children the parents things, will by, moonlight. things by moonlight yeah. they will call children of the community and they will teach them values and they'll tell them our thoughts is those things are very important don't say because of social media i am one of the you know my generation is one of the people that started with social media but still guess what my parents will say don't touch this phone if you are making a call in their presence they'll say speak louder if you can't speak loud drop the call and they would say things over and over when you're going out as a lady you shouldn't be back by 5 30 you should be back to the house no matter where you're going to sometimes uh, when we are going for maybe a, a colleague's birthday or something my father will look at it and say do you have your wristwatch two hours go and come back if you come back later than that two hours you know what's your name you will explain what happened and you say what happened to your research why didn't you come back so parents need to be firm as friendly as you can be you need to be firm because it's your responsibility god is going to hold parents so don't just say um, my child is in cultism what led to that were you neglect um were you sleeping were you just taken on unawares so even when the child is there what are the steps you've taken have you tried to reach out to this child maybe they are not feeling loved maybe they don't have the open communication with their parents or they feel that their parents can't actually meet 
some financial um things that they need some demands that they may need and so they need that oh they need a boyfriend they need a girlfriend or they feel that a girl outside is going to fill that void of love that their mother or their father is not giving to them or even rich families now you see the parents are always busy traveling here and there and they don't have systems in place to checkmate their children to check over what their children is doing their friends that they are coming over the parties the schools and sometimes children's children are allowed to go abroad at a very early stage and that's why you see them coming back as drug addicts because parents are negligent i when i was growing up my parents would say i will not allow any child to go outside nigeria except you finish your first degree initially my brothers and i were thinking oh daddy is wicked mommy is wicked but in the long run those parents that allow their children to go from maybe um, grade 9 grade 10 we saw the ripple effect most of them don't really have anything tangible to point at and it's happening over and over before our very eyes so parents should stand up and decide and say no my own child will not be a drug addict no matter the little we have let's start early let's pray together let's act work together husband and wife working together if the woman has to leave her job let her do it if it's the man that will sit at home or have um is um leave when the children are on holiday from school so that they can at least monitor these children to a to a a degree it goes a long way but when parents are just busy with their own work and all that and then the children are just left to nannies and social media a whole lot can go wrong all right, you, you've you've said a lot about children and um, all You've mentioned before now, children of that grew up in the western part of Nigeria, mm. they will believe that when a child is born, it belongs to the society. Mm -hmm. But that culture right now, you know, when we grow up, if you flog a child, you will answer. The, the, <laughs> the parents will come back and still flog the child. Mm -hmm. because the child belongs to the community yeah. but right now even in schools if you flog a child I have a, a school <laughs> have policies where you can't even raise a stroke on the child now to a large extent I, I think they might be correct because of medical challenges and what have you I want to ask this question is there a deliberate plan by society to just oppose morals in children especially the millennials and gen z's is it the societal thing that has brought us to this level? It's not the societal because I'll still say it started from the home because even parents are part of the society. Back then, if your child's friend does anything wrong, even by looking at that child, you can have that tingling in you and say, no, I don't want my child to work with this boy or this girl again. And then you call your child aside and say, no, this and this. You've not seen a situation where, where a child is into fraud and mm. the child brings bags of rice back home the parents, the are, parents happy. are joyous yes and a, a mm. girl is not bringing back money home and the mother is asking her don't you see what your mates are doing yes now this to a large extent has become the societal uh, from the societal norms mm. as i'm asking can the society also be part of the influencing factor that has also contributed to um, mm. children going off limits in terms of their moral stance Parents first will still be blamed. Parents are still part of the society. However, the society needs to stand and say, oh, my neighbor's child did this. Even if they'll call me names, let me correct him or her. Back then, parents- Even if you can be arrested for saying, for, for disciplining your child, your parent, your, your neighbor's <laughs> child, because we've seen that happen. That there are levels of discipline. It's not only spanking that is a main of a means of okay, discipline. Okay, that means I'm, I'm obsolete. So let, let, me, get, <laughs> no, no, let, me, get, no, no, let me get educated. That's now. that's not what I'm saying. Okay, you can actually sit them down and speak with them. That's also a way of correction. I was saying that some parents will, you know, celebrate bad things or negative things that their children are doing. But when the child is not around, a concerned neighbor in the society can call the mother and say, "Ah, this thing you are doing to your child." Now you go suffer in the end of the deal. You are telling your child to keep, you know, doing this and just bringing back um, cars or different men are dropping her and you feel, oh, it doesn't matter. After all, you're getting aged. 
their life continues. Don't worry, she'll marry one of these men or something. Or your child that is a, a teenager or a youth, you don't know what he does. And all you care about is as far as he sends money to your account. Or he just comes every now and then, he brings things to the house, he buys different gadgets and you know, you don't probe your children. It's wrong. Society needs to talk. We need to talk more before, in fact, when you see things on the road or in the social media, the comments these days are alarming. People are trying to use comedy to correct people, but it's not working because at the end of the the day people just watch and laugh <laughs> oh this girl did this and that and this is the effect because it came out in a way of comedy or comedy platform people just laugh over over it and they don't take it as serious something so parents community leaders in different sectors need to start speaking out and say no this this is wrong my child did this please help us correct him or her it's very important. All right. Our, our, our time is fast spent. Uh, I know we have a lot of conversations to have, but just before I let you go, parents are curious out there to know what practical steps can they take to ensure that they don't fall victims of negligence, especially as they begin to raise children, especially younger parents at this point. What advice can you give to them? Start early. Wherever you are, whether you're pregnant, you have toddlers, you have teenagers, even if you have youth, even if your child is already married, start today, start early. They say that um, the best time to plant tree is 100 years ago. The next best time is today. So don't wait, start today. Start reading books, start going for seminars. Uh, develop yourself and say, what are those things I should do? What are the parenting styles that my parents did? what did i like about them what didn't i like what can i change about it and before you know it gradually connect with your children before you correct them i wrote a book on parenting um it's titled my seed it's a very very good book that everyone should get see when you read books you get a lot of ideas from other people's stories and experience so develop yourself and experience as in express love to your children Husbands, hug your daughters, tell them you're, they are beautiful, tell them they are smart, tell them good things, affirmations, so that no, no boy, we're on air, no boy, okay, we sweep them off their feet by just saying you're beautiful, you're this and that. No, let the father stand up and start toasting their girls, you know, as in speak good things to your daughters to the extent that your daughters... The only thing that is permanent in life is change. Therefore, change is desirable. However, if there's any time there's any change, we should be aware that a lot of things will have to come into play. It is not limited to change in office, change in personalities, but also includes the way we do things. The way we do things in Nigeria, that is why one of the things that we have not been having desired results. Every time that we have a change in government, there are a lot of expectations from Nigerians. Why are we not achieving this? It is simply because we are only focusing on who should be the head of this prestata the end of this agency, it should be far than, than that. What we should be looking at is um, changing our orientation, a meaningful way of 
thinking in a positive way. If there is any change, So let's, let's, let's hear you again. So parents have to start early. It's important that the fathers speak well to their children, express, ex, express love to their mother, and let the mothers also do the same. Start early. Read books for your children. Ensure that you are saving and planning ahead for your children. Don't wait for when admission comes in and then you start going round and round. Invest early. And that is how to get your children in the right track. Well, she's called Vicola for a reason. Her name is Victoria <laughs> Yusufu, and she has done justice to this conversation. I want to say thank you so much for being a part of Signature Morning today. Thank you so much. And hope when next we need you, you'll be available for us. Of course. What is our far we can go? Do remember to follow us on all our social media handles. I am Godwin Sunday. From all of us here in the studio, it's bye for now. <laughs>